Porsche is running into a problem with branding and culture, and uh, I think I know how to fix it. All right, as my friend Eric Shea uh, always says, if you think you can outthink a Porsche engineer, then think again. And if you still think you can outthink a Porsche engineer, then I'm, I'm all ears, I'm ready to listen. And, and I think the same too about most business models, uh, and it's specifically about Porsche too. If I think I can outthink any Porsche business development person or whatever, uh, you know, think again. But I do think that this is something that they, could be aware of. It's a reason I love the culture, but maybe not necessarily the brand as it sits modern day. Let's talk about brand versus culture. The Porsche culture is the best car culture, I think, hands down, out there. It is the best, it's the pedigree. You've got guys who are building overland rigs to guys who are setting track records, right? Like, you've got the race car gambit to the overlanding extreme outdoors gambit. Just recently, they took a 911 out on some mountaintops, I believe, down in South America. Like, like go go look up some of these shots. I mean, they're they're gorgeous, and and, and the car itself was pushed to ex extremes that no other brand is doing right now, right? Um, and then you take a look at some of the track stuff, right? The GT3 RS, insane car, setting tons of records, race pedigrees, all this stuff, like. You've got this wide gambit right now in Porsche culture, where if you're an outdoors person, you have a group. If you're a track person, you have a group. If you're a, even to RWBs, if you're a JDM fan, you've got a group there too. There are guys making crazy body kits, ma making these older 911s look amazing. RWB being specifically like, I think the staple in that space. And then you've also got the classic guys, and I kind of fall between this camp too of like outdoors, classic people, classic cars. You've got such good classic cars that are beautiful, you know, and, and hold to the test of time, mechanically, functionally, and also in, in beauty. And there's no other brand out there that has a pedigree or has a community quite like Porsche. There just isn't. You know, you can think of a couple that have aspects, right? The only thing Porsche is missing in for, for a car brand, really, is probably, probably trucks. You know, if Porsche came out with trucks, it would be the ultimate car brand at that point, or car culture. I mean, to, Porsche would be the ultimate car culture. It's insane just how diverse the culture is with Porsche. So we've talked about the culture, now let's talk about the brand. And the brand, I would say, is more so what the, what the company self-identifies as. Um, if you kind of look at a lot of Porsche's marketing, again, any car company is gonna have this, but their plane, I wanna say, it's your average Joe, your average you know, Jane just driving a Porsche. And, and that sells, like that pushes cars, no doubt. But what I think the brand is missing is really honing in on th enthusiasts the proper way. They are, to an extent, uh, and evidence of that is the Dakar, the GT3 RS. Uh, they even came out with the 911T, you know, manual models. They're definitely catering to enthusiasts, but in my opinion, they're not doing it enough. That's easy to say as somebody who is outside, uh, outside of the company and, and not knowing the logistics. But um, I think what they could be doing is for for models like the Dakar, um, make it not limited. Don't limit the production. I, I really think that that car is overpriced based off of the production limit that they've set for themselves. And it's really something that, in my opinion, here in Utah, I would see a lot of people buying. In fact, I know of three people who have them on order just in my circle. So that car 
is a specialty car and it's a very special car, but I don't think it should be a limited car. And I think something like the Dakar has value in something like the Cayman as well. Um, or, or maybe even a more off-roady version of the Cayenne, which the Cayenne is very capable off-road already, but make it cater towards that. Tacoma does this with the TRD Pro, right? The TRD off-road. And I think Porsche can easily, easily do this to all their cars. In fact, they did it just recently with their Panamera series, I believe in the Taycan. So it's not something that they aren't willing to do nor don't know how to do. It's just something they're limiting themselves on. And I think that if they opened up production and made it available as an option continuously, that it would lower the cost make it not such a specialty vehicle and allow people to play with it and actually get dirty with it. Um, I, I think this is another big reason is people are going to collect these cars. Collectors aren't necessarily community focused and community does drive sales. Ask me why I know that is, is because during COVID, I worked for a lot of these off-road brands and I had a Tacoma build myself. Um, I jumped on as a consultant in marketing and uh, we saw a tremendous amount of sales drive through community members, influencers, um, you know, to, to even community managers, Facebook groups, all these uh, different forums that were selling products like crazy. Uh, we were offering off-road lights to bumpers to, um, to you know, fabrication parts for the Tacoma specifically. And it was blowing up for Toyota. Toyota was driving sales because the community was demanding it. And the community was, uh, was full of enthusiasts who were aftermarket mo modifying these cars. I think Porsche is in a similar boat. I'm not saying that they're the same as Toyota, but they're in a similar boat and camp in that a lot of enthusiasts modify their cars. That is the culture that Porsche has. You know, ask me again how I know why that is, is because I've talked to a ton of members in this space. There's definitely a aftermarket culture that Porsche has lent itself. Another example of this is Gunther Works. Look at Gunther Works, Singer, um, Roof, all these other aftermarket shops that Porsche has, I think, gratefully allowed to exist um, and, and nourishes in, in instances and has good relationships with because that sells the brand. I bought my 1976 9, uh, 911 because of the the Gunther Works model I saw in person. I mean, that thing was gorgeous. That sold a car to me. That sold me on Porsche to me buying a, a classic car because I saw what these could become re-envisioned. I'm not interested in buying a car to keep in a collection. I'm interested in buying a car to drive and have fun. Most enthusiasts who drive Porsches, that's who they are. I think if Porsche just did a better job um, which is easy to say on the outside. I understand if somebody's from Porsche watching this, um, don't get don't get offended. You're you're on the right path. It's just I think we we could do better on ramping up the production um, and and open this up specifically helping your aftermarket support. I get it. It may not be that lucrative or seeming that lucrative in the short term as a business plan to help your aftermarket suppliers or supporters, but. I'll be more of a fan and enthusiast if I can get support for these cars, that's for sure. The more people that know how to modify and work on them, the more they're gonna last. I mean, I think there's a statistic out there that 70% of Porsches are still on the road today, right? That That's a lot to do because they're reliable, they are, but that's also to do because there's a lot of support. If you didn't have these shops helping out and building these cars and making them what they are, then there just wouldn't be that many on the road and they wouldn't have the reputation that they have and they wouldn't have the community that they have and the brand wouldn't be what it is today. So, long story short, I think the answer to the problem that the brand is facing uh, and, and what it could do to support the community a little bit more is keep making the cars that we love but try and increase the production so that way it's not so limited or lower an entry model cost to where it can be custom built and uh, someone like your average Joe can get back into a 911 because the 911 was always sports car priced with, um, I would say, supercar performance. Uh, you know, maybe not the base models with the performance, but the base models were priced around what you could get, you know, your, your back in the day, your Mustangs or your sports cars, right? The Porsche 911 has always been referenced to a sports car and uh, and it's had the price to match that. 
um, but it's had the performance to also back up with a supercar. So what a lot of people like myself have done is bought the entry level model and modified it. I went classic route, right? But a lot of people um, would buy, you know, your average Joe could buy a Tacoma today, a modern Tacoma and modify it into a street or off-road beast for under 100K. I think that could, could be a great factor in supporting the community if Porsche maybe not lowered the cost of their cars, but maybe produce a car kind of like the 911T or what they're doing already um, that's, that's catered towards the entry level into modification. I know the 718 is priced fairly competitively still, and they want to keep the 911 as the flagship of the Halo car, um, and, and that, that's okay. But at the same time, I think there is a long-term play that you could be giving out to the 992 generation here that could create a really good culture around that car. Same as the culture around air-cooled cars, or same as the culture that's developed around the 996 and the culture that's developed around the 997. I'm not saying make them cheap. I'm just saying give probably an option. Let creatives be creative with it. Anyway, that's my uh, rant for today. Uh, again, I love everyone there at Porsche. Um, you know, I think, again, this is my opinion, so keep that in mind. Um, the community and brand are two different things. I think Porsche has the best community out there, hands down, there's no question. It's brand, uh, a lot of car manufacturers are catching up. Look at, for example, Lamborghini, Ferrari, building SUVs, right? Um, I wouldn't be surprised if McLaren joined in here pretty soon. Car brands are diversifying themselves. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if Porsche made a truck. Just saying I wouldn't, um, but I don't expect it. I think that's Volkswagen's department, <laughs> but we'll see. We'll see. I still think price-wise, Porsche is still bang for your buck. They're still great, um, but they are rising, and that could kill off a lot of the enthusiasts that you could be getting in my generation, or younger generations who are growing up and getting it to, to their own money and, and cars. Something to be mindful of, something to think about. I love, again, this brand and the culture. Um, in my personal eyes, it's the best brand and the best culture. But anyway, guys, leave your comments below. What do you think I got wrong? What do you think? you agree with I, I could be wrong I'm always open to being wrong I'd rather be <laughs> wrong and, and corrected than wrong and silent and and uh, not corrected so love to hear feedback in the comments below my opinion is always subject to change as it should be hopefully this is uh, opinion shared with with a lot of you and if it is let me know as well share this with uh, your fellow Porsche enthusiasts or your fellow Porsche non enthusiasts get them excited about the culture excited about the brand uh, I, I sure as hell am excited about both. In the future, the next five years are gonna be a very decisive thing uh, for car culture itself, but for Porsche especially. But we'll see how it goes. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next episode, or I'll see you out on the road. Take care.